Welcome everybody. This is going to be a tutorial about checkpoints and the few tweaks that are required. So when you respawn, you'll actually keep your current weapons and any items that you are carrying. So uh, most suggestions for checkpoints are uh, this method that you see here. You have a, a start point, obviously, that is enabled by default. This is where you will start and then everywhere you want a checkpoint, you place another spawn, you set it to be disabled by default, and then depending on uh, a trigger of your choice, in this case I have said uh, when the player enters this module, you enable your new checkpoint and you disable your player start. The problem with that is, in my opinion, that it becomes very cumbersome when you have more checkpoints. So I have this one, but now I have to remember that I have to disable this checkpoint. There we go. And I have to disable this checkpoint and same here if I would add one here then I have to disable this one and this one and that one and this is a really small level where all of them are close together but when you have a bigger level that is more complex you could end up with quite a few checkpoints and then you have to well it becomes complicated very fast and checkpoints should be simple in my opinion so how can we actually fix that we can fix that by working with a variable instead um, I'm just going to leave this one here and we're actually going to work with this one first so um, what I want is a simple method to disable all other checkpoints and only enable the checkpoint of my choice. Uh, if you think about that logically, uh, we could say that we want to disable all checkpoints, even the one that I want to be active. Uh, if I enable the one that I want to be active very shortly after I disabled all the others. And that is actually something we can build with nodes. And we're going to use a variable for that. And I picked a Boolean. And we're going to add a new one. We're going to rename it. And we're going to rename it. I like to start with the name of the variable. And then checkpoint changed. And the only reason that I am creating a variable is so I have uh, a method to see whether a checkpoint has been changed. So whether this is true or false, this variable, I really don't care. The only thing I care about is that there is an event which is called onChange. And when that is triggered, I want it to disable my spawn. So, and from this one, we're telling it to toggle. So we have a, a strange looking logic chain here, but it's really rather simple. When I change a checkpoint, when I set a new checkpoint, I toggle the boolean. So it gets switched from true to false or from false to true. Again, the value doesn't matter. It only matters that it gets changed. Then there's an event uh, that gets triggered because the variable gets changed. And when that event is triggered, I tell it to disable this checkpoint. Now you can imagine that 
just this chain here on the left side a variable on change disable player start means that for all my checkpoints in my level whenever i change a checkpoint whenever i toggle that variable all of them will be turned off of course the problem is that right now i turn all of them off and i turn this one on at the same time and that is not how i described it just a few seconds ago so we have to enter a delay like so and now you have a checkpoint that is uh, self-sustained so let's let's actually rename this you know because we are in the red room and i can double click to select everything i can copy it and move it in this room Delete the old one. There we go. Rename it. This is green. TP green. Double click. Control G. Now, of course, we have to change the start point as well. Let's rename this to blue. Because right now the start point won't be disabled so remember that I said that it was the left side of the chain that would disable the checkpoint well that's the only part we're going to copy there we go and this guarantees that no matter what checkpoint gets chosen when a new checkpoint is set this checkpoint will be disabled just like the others with the only difference that this one never gets reactivated because it doesn't have its own trigger you know this is where you start so this is very easy especially when you are changing stuff and shuffling things around so let's see whether this works one other room then I think we have tested enough to prove that it works yeah so this is a very easy way to maintain checkpoints so let's see what happens when I pick up a key card but do you keep that when you die yeah so that is not a problem we don't have to do anything special for that what happens when I pick up a weapon? So I have the repeater and the lightning gun right now. Ah, I am pressing next weapon right now and nothing is happening. So we have to look at that. Uh, I like to place my logic separately, but um that's up to you really so um something i didn't explain was uh what i did for the starting loadout uh i like to use this so not give the player separate items but just give them a complete loadout in this case a combat shotgun grenades and the ability to double jump and ledge grab and I do that by using the on player spawn event on a player proxy. A player proxy is just uh, a convenient way to uh, work with a spawn object without having to link your logic directly to a spawn object. Um, and on player spawn, I give the player a loadout. This little chain here, this relay, is normally used to give signals to more objects at the same time but the only reason it's here is because it has a run once property and I've set it to true 
And this means that the loadout is only given when the player spawns for the first time, so at player start. Because uh, when the player respawns at a checkpoint, you want the player to keep the weapons that he or she picked up. And that is something that we're going to set here on the gameplay settings. Uh, when you place a map object, you can choose uh, your various options. You have on map started and on match started. Um, when the map starts, send a signal. This happens before all players are in the level, so this is like on level load, really. Um, and from there, we just set a gameplay settings object active, like so. And what we have to look for is keep inventory, keep inventory on respawn. So essentially, all I did was uh, I already had this logic. Uh, I linked uh, this node to gameplay settings, so I set gameplay settings active. And on the gameplay settings, I made certain that keep inventory is enabled. So that should be all. Let's see whether that is actually the case. So I'm going to pick the super shotgun and I'm going to swap the combat shotgun for the lightning gun to pick up the red key. I'm going to the blue room. And there we go. I have all my weapons, I have my key card, and I have a checkpoint system that won't drive me nuts as my mob grows bigger. I hope it helps you and I look forward to playing your mobs with nice checkpoints and everything.